Joe Biden has said he will continue to look for solutions after the U.S. Supreme Court overturned the right to access an abortion in a history-making decision that has divided opinion across the country. The court's ruling last week overturned the constitutional right to an abortion that has existed for almost 50 years following a legal case known as Roe v. Wade. We thought we'd talk about it with um, Scotty and Dr. Shola, and they are with us now. Hello to you both. Thanks for joining us. Scotty, to you, first of all. Uh, you say abortion activists are raging because they cannot murder babies. You cannot expect decency from those who never had it in the first place. Perhaps you'd like to expand on that for us. Well, ultimately, Kay, this debate is not necessarily about abortion. Rather, it's about states' rights and our Constitution. And our Constitution is written that unless it's specifically noted, the power goes back to the states. And that is literally, in essence, what this ruling was and why the Supreme Court said, listen, you can have an abortion, but that's going to be your state's decision upon it as regarded in our Tenth Amendment. So, yes, in one way, this has been the rule of the law for 50 years. That doesn't necessarily necessarily make it right. We do not have constitutional rights in the United States to have an abortion. It's never mentioned in our Constitution. And therefore, giving the power back to the state to make the decision is exactly what was right for the Supreme Court to do. This has necessarily no changes. The majority of states will not see any changes with their abortion law because of this. And I just want to remind people, this is only because the Democrats were upset over a case in Mississippi. If they would not have appealed the case of Mississippi, Roe versus Wade on the books would be exactly as is. But they decided to challenge that case, and the Supreme Court took it up for the first time in 50 years, and that is why we are, are where we are today. Dr. Shola. I think that's an outright lie. The bottom line here oh, no. is that Roe v. Wade and the decision by the Supreme Court and pro-lifers by Scotty is all about subjugating women. It's all about get, taking the power from women to make decisions over their bodies and over their lives. And please, let's understand this. This has nothing to do with the Democrats. The Republicans have been planning to do this for a long time, which is why Trump put the kind of, you know, the judges and conservative, hardcore conservative judges in the Supreme Court. Let us also understand that this, when we talk about constitutional rights, the, the, the purpose of the constitutional right is to confirm the human right that we have as human beings. Abortion rights is health care. And if you're not ready to provide all that is necessary for a woman to give birth to a child, if she's decided she doesn't want that child, whether it's due to rape or for whatever other reason, you have no right, none whatsoever, to determine for any woman what decisions she should make over her own life. Now, what the Supreme Court did by passing this on to the states and reversing Roe v. Wade is making women's rights over their own bodies up for political debate. That is an insult. That is disgusting. And I'm surprised that Scotty, at one moment to another, that that does not even cause you any concern. But I think that is because what you want is to be able to determine for other women like me what we should what we should do with our bodies, whether we want to have children or not. And the point is, I don't care if you don't want to have an abortion. It should be none of your business whether or not I want to have an abortion or any other woman wants to have an abortion. What's going to be next, Scotty? You tell me. Are you going to, are we going to now stop, I don't know, interracial marriages? Are you going to penalize people or women oh, who don't on, want to have so children at all? That's come on. It is regression. And and not even based on the law. Ages. Ages. America has gone back to the dark ages. This is nothing to celebrate. It is shameful and disgraceful. And the fact that you've come up here and decided to say, well, actually, women shouldn't have this right. There is no absolute right. It's not a constitutional right. It just tells me, again, okay. that all you're trying to do is you're causing more division amongst us women. And that is part of the problem. The only okay. person this benefits are men. Well, let Scotty come back on that, please, if you would, please, Dr. Shola. Scotty, your, your response. 
Well, the fact that she says, I don't know what I said that was wrong because everything I was said was based on fact. And the reality of it is only 1% of abortions are actually obtained because of rape, 5% because of incest. But the reality of it is last year alone in 2020, 930,000 abortions happened. The majority of them were second, third, or fourth abortions by women. And it's, uh, we don't have a right to an abortion. We don't have a right to murder here in the United States. You have a right to live. And in my beliefs, my religion, Beliefs, as well as the majority, including the Muslim faith, the Buddhist faith, majority of faiths also believe that life begins at conception. And here in the U.S., unlike the U.K., the U.K. You can have an abortion up to 26 weeks. In the U.S., you could literally have an abortion in some states all the way up to the moment that the baby could have been born. The baby could have been actually born alive, and in many cases, we are seeing that that actually happened sometimes in these horrible clinics, that babies that could have a chance at life were murdered. And right. that is what we were trying to stop with. So once again, it's not outlawing abortion. It's just allowing the states to make the decision for themselves. This is actually giving the power to women to be able to live, to have a chance at life. And that is what we celebrate. I'm sorry. Again, that is a lie. It is taking What is a lie about it, Shola? What is a lie? It is taking power. Like, what did I lie Okay, so it is taking power away from women. It's not giving power to women, particularly it's women power who are want to be alive. To I'm going to respond to you. It is taking power away from women. It is banning abortion. That is absolutely taking power from women. And again, you keep referring to, to this, oh, you know, the Constitution does not specifically say that you have got a right to abortion. Well, the, the Constitution did not specifically say that, um, you know, black Americans have a right to vote. It did not specifically say that black and white people can get married together. It does not specifically say all of these things. Hold on, ladies, 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 thank you. Scotty, we'll come back to you in a second. Dr. Schuller. The point is the Constitution does not give right to black people. It does not specifically say black people can vote. Does not specifically say interracial marriages are right. Does not specifically protect the rights of the LGBT community, which is why many people, many marginalized communities have had to fight for this right. So you can't sit there and say, well, because the constitution doesn't say it, because the founding fathers could not think it, could not conform the thought that, oh, we better write all these things down because people are too dumb enough to figure out actually liberty, life means everybody. That does not mean you get to say that women should be denied the right to make decisions over their own bodies. So my point to you is this. This is taking the power away from women, black women, working class women who cannot afford alternatives. If you're so concerned about the baby living, why don't you talk about universal health care, universal child care? Why don't you provide for these babies once they're born? But you're not going to do that. The Republican Party is not going to do that because they're a bunch of hypocrites. You want the child to be born and then you're going to reject a marginalized child and then as hypocrites not even lift a finger to feed the child shelter the child or clothe the child so okay. it is I'm going to let Scotty come back there if I may please but I just want to clarify for you Scotty actually it's 24 weeks of pregnancy here in the UK but uh, yeah. abortions can be carried out after that time if the mother's life's at risk go on Okay, so here's the thing. It's absolutely pathetic and insulting to all of those who have fought for historical changes. And in the case of racial, gender, all of those, there has been amendments passed. So yes, it is a part of our Constitution. It was actually passed through Congress. That's why this is not a federal right to an abortion. It has never passed. There's not an amendment. Therefore, it goes back to the state. If people care so much about it, pass it through Congress. But even Democrats who hold the House and the Senate refuse to pass it through because they know that is not not what the people of the majority of states do not want here in the United States, want to see a federal right to abortion because you are limiting life. And that goes against our religious, the right to a religious stake in it. And it's not about, of course it's about, it's not telling women that they can't control their own bodies. It's actually giving women a chance at life. This has nothing, nothing to do with birth control, infertility treatments, all of those things, all this gaslighting and fear mongering that people like Shola, with all due respect, are trying to sell us and trying to blur the issue because when it comes down to it they just don't like the fact that they cannot use abortion as a source of birth control a source of living instead of being responsible where we now unlike the 
1970s when birth control was not readily available, it is readily available in every single community health care across the United States. People of all levels of income can have responsible choice. Like I said, there is always a case in the, in the case of mothers. Obviously, it is a doc that is between a doctor and the family to decide. But people still have the right to life. That is guaranteed by the Constitution, not the right to end it. And there's okay. a big difference between what the UK law is and the US law is. And in this case, it gives the states a chance to make the decisions for their own. If you don't like well, it, go across the state line. California well, is calling. Just to clarify, actually, abortion is illegal in the UK, except under cer certain circumstances. We'll be looking at that uh, with our former Justice Secretary um, a little bit later on in the programme. But, Dr. Shola, to Scotty's point, that some women are using abortion as a form of contraception, and that cannot be acceptable. Right. Who are you to create what the standards are? And my point is this. When you, when you place on women this thinking that, well, clearly you are wrong because you're using it as contraception without understanding the totality of the circumstances, you're using a blanket mindset to subjugate women. That right there is wrong. You do not know what the totality of the circumstances of these women are. So I'm saying to you to back the heck off. And let's also understand that you say whatever your beliefs and values are, to determine that another woman does not come up to par to your standards and beliefs is absolutely wrong because I don't get to decide for you, Scotty. And look, I do agree. I do not understand why it's taking so long for Roe v. Wade to have been codified into law. It should have been. Why that wasn't done by the Republicans and the Democrats, heaven knows. But the bottom line is that the one source by law, by precedent, that women had um, as a federal right, and that's how they saw it as, has been taken away from them. Bodily autonomy over a woman's body is not up for political debate. And that is the point. We should not be saying to women that you cannot think for yourself. How dare you have two, three, four abortions when you do not know what your circumstances are? You're treating women as lesser than less. And you're coming up with all of this so-called Christian values. The Christian values. I, I mean, for all I, for, as far as I'm aware, the Constitution does not even refer to God. The Constitution is not meant to be um, to merging, to be okay. merging the church and the state. But all Republicans do is keep on using their so-called um, Christian values to judge other people. And I'm a Christian. I am a Christian, and I'm saying to you, as far as I'm concerned, if abortion is a sin, then it is between the woman and God. It's none of your business. Okay. We must leave it there, ladies. Um, thank you both very much indeed for joining us on the programme this morning. We started with you, Scotty, so we must uh, end with Dr Shola this morning. Thank you both. Um, and just to clarify, um, abortion uh, in the United Kingdom, two doctors must approve uh, the decision to have an abortion, um, having um, said that the a baby would pose a greater risk to the physical or mental health of the woman than a termination. Talking about that in more detail, as I said, uh, with the former Justice Secretary, Dr um, Sir uh, Robert Buckland, uh, about half past nine this morning.